In a dark little corner of the internet, there lies a curious subreddit. Those who chance upon it might be struck with fleeting amusement, but those who delve deeper into its history see something more. The Garfield Media franchise is no stranger to parody. There's an infinity of iteration on this, from simple projects like Garfield minus Garfield to the YouTube channel Lasagna Cat. Thickly ironic parodies of Jim Davis's comic strips seem to stretch into infinity, turning a vacuous emblem of Americana into something else. No place does this with more style than the subreddit I'm Sorry John. The subreddit takes its name from a 2018 comic by Double Baby, in which John awakens to discover his home has been entirely consumed by his pet cat, Garfield. However, unlike other subreddits which capitalize on a singular idea catching fire, this subreddit is devoted instead to a conglomeration of ideas seemingly developed in parallel, combining Garfield with cosmic horror. The images on the site all make the same joke in myriad ways. What if Garfield was scary? Artists have come together drawn by the idea seemingly planted in their heads by chance or inspired by the art on display itself. It might seem outwardly absurd that many different artists have independently come up with this concept as though Garfield is really out there somewhere, arresting their minds for his foul cause. But I would posit that it's far less sinister. Garfield as a series is ripe for iteration since it is both appealing and insubstantial, almost inviting the reader to instead inject their own substance, be it humorous or otherwise. If nothing else, I'm Sorry John is an immediately understood concept. Take Garfield, one of the most harmless, unassuming media properties in the modern world, and juxtapose it with something that is its antithesis. But the video isn't about Garfield. If you'd like more information about the Garfield media franchise, look at the likes of Quentin Reviews. This video is about Spongebob. Back here again, can't get enough of JoJo Explains, some interesting stuff. On our I'm Sorry John, each weekend users are invited to post original content that can fall outside of the Garfield IP. A Reddit user by the name of Still in the Simulation posted the following comic. Portraying the terror of deep sea predation juxtaposed with the usually cheerful SpongeBob characters resonated with the site's users unsurprisingly. The post received nearly 100,000 upvotes, an unprecedented 98% upvote rate. The success surpassed even some of the most popular on the subreddit, but this comic was just the beginning. Still in the Simulation would continue to post more and more comics after this, and by the second page the name Bikini Bottom Horror was made. Each subsequent page, also posted on OC Weekends, reached similar acclaim, and now in 2021 the updates are still rolling in. The name of course is a parody of H.P. Lovecraft's work. What began as a simple horror twist on Spongebob Squarepants evolved into something new. The simple comic transformed from a singular image into a fully-fledged web comic, and with new pages dropping whenever still in the simulation found time to make them. A story unfolded. A conspiracy about the Krabby Patty secret formula to kaiju battles to the sacrifice of beloved characters, all with a backdrop that put Spongebob, Lovecraft, puns, and marine biology into a blender on puree. For those intrigued, here's a link in the description to Still in the Simulation's website where the full comic can be read. I wouldn't dare spoil it in this video. What's more surreal than this is that this isn't the only webcomic series to begin in such an innocuous manner. Another webcomic by the name of Scoob and Shag began as a surreal companion to the Scooby-Doo Mania franchise, but slowly began to fall head over heels into itself, introducing well thought out lore and storylines. We can't forget the ever classic Tales Gets Trolled either, the series that began as a lesson for anyone getting bullied on the internet and finished as one of the most in-depth tales in outsider art. I don't know what to call this phenomenon, but I love it. The creativity people foster on the internet never fails to make me smile. From Homestuck to Scoob and Shag, these self-published works reaching the masses could never happen outside this medium. In this decade, we're quick to reduce the internet to a series of social media platforms, but those of us who have been around for a long time know the true value of the internet. 
the incredible socializing force that rockets creatives into the success that they deserve and never would have gotten otherwise. It reveals a humble truth about art and uncovers the toil of creatives that before might have been scoffed at by elites. Before, comics appeared in newspapers. Before, stories appeared in books. Now in 2021, all of them appear everywhere. Anyone who can open MS Paint can make something and put it out for the world to see. It's a world artists of days past probably idealized. What I'm saying is that we live in an artist's paradise, free from the monetary and spatial constraints of the past, free from the endless chase of acclaim, accolades, and monetary security. It's still not perfect, of course, for online media has been infested with corporate greed in its own right. For every Netflix and every Hulu, there's a vacuous, soulless counterpart like HBO Max or Disney+. Plus. Art for its own sake and the joy of bringing it to others is one of the most pure forms of creativity. The likes of the Bikini Bottom Horror might not be the most proficient, but that fact is irrelevant. Someone made it and put it out for the world to see. Someone took the characters that are emblematic of both nostalgia and corporate media and turned them into something new, something I would argue is far more interesting than the show itself reaches in its twilight years. The perversion of the media of old, intentional or not, is telling. Another avenue of this is the website Archive of Our Own, or fanfiction.net, the internet's largest fanfiction services. Derivative works flow as freely as if from a stream, flowing into a big fanfic ocean, where fanfiction artists are forged in the fires of their own peers. With practice, some of them publish books in their own right. Everywhere you look, there's a hotbed of creatives yearning to put their works into the world. And now, there's an avenue. But to pull the scope back on the subject, what is so immediately compelling about this? Like I said before, the Bikini Bottom Horror doesn't just appeal to the niche of I'm Sorry John, it reached a claim for those who browsed R All on Reddit, too. There's something instantaneously recognizable and compelling about this. The absurdity of one's first impression gives way to intrigue effortlessly. Even though the comic was posted in what is essentially a rough sketch on a photographed piece of paper, it clung to the minds of whoever saw it like a barnacle on the underside of a ship. This question is of course rhetorical, but I'd posit it is a response to the squeaky clean nature of the media we're given by mainstream pop culture. This is not some indictment. I think it's perfectly fine to portray conflict in a cartoonish and simplistic way like Spongebob does, but I think there's something frustrating about its ubiquity. Something inside all viewers, old and young, that understands that the version of life we're seeing is watered down, baby-proofed. In response to this, the natural answer is, like I said before, antithesis. People push back against this harmless facade and make something that grates and is harmful, something disturbing and existential. The Bikini Bottom Horror. A while back, there was a video getting recommended to people called Skin Theory, about a theory in Spongebob that the people of Bikini Bottom were all wearing false, realistic skins. Fan theories like this are common, one of the most prolific being the now infamous Rugrats is actually about Angelica being crazy theory, which posits a grim view of the happy little Rugrats world, where Angelica is a disturbed child, rife with infanticide and stillbirth. This is why there are no disturbing theories about, say, The Sopranos. Tony Soprano already occupies a realistic world with conflict on the level that we might expect from a gangster. There's no parody to be made, no antithesis, no yearning for something unspoken. Humans want to confront these things. I'm not sure why we project the idea of children's media as cartoonish or hyper-simplified. Children want to engage with complex issues much like adults do. Anyone who's observed a child making their dolls fight to grisly death or watched them delete the latter from their sims' pools knows this. Children are often the most macabre of any of us. The myth of innocence says that children are angels who do not know the horror of the world, but I don't know any child who does not eagerly invite terror and gore into their media. Innocence, then, is not an angelic state of being where children want nothing but happiness in a soft little blanket, but a state of being in which children need the terrors of the world contextualized. This is why it's so refreshing to see children's media engage with complex topics in the modern day. For all of its flaws, Steven Universe didn't depict a world where everything was perfect. There was death, there was destruction. 
This is why these hyper-edgy fan theories don't proliferate about it. Same with shows like She-Ra or Ben 10. For children and adults, there is a yearning, conscious or not, to let the media they watch and enjoy engage with these topics. And the response is the Bikini Bottom Horror. The response is Scoob and Shag. The response is Tails Gets Trolled. Again, presenting a simplified world isn't bad by any stretch, and SpongeBob is a deeply beloved franchise, as well as Garfield, Sonic, and Scooby-Doo respectively. But at the end of the day, people understand that there is something perpetually unexplored about them. Is this condescension on the part of the creators? Is this an enshrinement of myths of innocence? Who's to say? Either way, the Bikini Bottom horror, and things like it, exist to scratch that itch. Thank you again for listening. My name is Funk McLovin, and I'll be posting one video every Sunday in 2021, 50 Sundays to go. If you'd like to support my efforts or suggest video topics, please consider donating to my Patreon. Thanks to current patron, Joe Dro. This video has been sponsored by Gravel, the loose rocks found in all kinds of places. From roads to concrete to schools, Gravel has your back. Gravel, a tasty snack under tarmac. Goodbye, everyone. Thank <laughs> you.